Okay, um, today next uh, uh, 90 minutes, I do the, this technical engineering perspective. And uh, this is the first time I do this one. So the, I may be uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, may not be too polished, That's, uh, just uh, bear me. Uh, uh, next year, probably uh, I can do much better. But uh, next year I have uh, another lecturer uh, who is going to do this one? I'm going to explain why that's the case. Okay, there's a technology and the engineering. Okay, and what's the difference between technology and engineering? Is it obvious to you or is it not too obvious to you? Okay, you, let's start from the yesterday, yesterday lecture, okay? In natural science, technology and the engineering is somewhat similar in the social science uh, law school and uh, political science. That's the sort of a uh, uh, metaphor. Okay, and uh, I'm basically a technology guy. So the my lecture is uh, pretty much biased toward the uh, technology. What I mean is, uh, oh, how how do we do the after technology? How do we do the engineering? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> But uh, if the Jeff Houston speak, he's the extreme of an uh, engineering guy. Then he thinks that technology that's easy. There's a whole bunch of them. You just pick up any one of them. Engineering, that's, that's tough. And uh, <clears throat> the next year, I'm going to invite uh, Lee Shin. He's the uh, middle, right in the middle. He can cover both just about uh, perfectly. And uh, he cannot come this year. Uh, so the, I, uh, I volunteered. And uh, those are the 10 topics we are going to talk. Okay, technology is a component. Like a, like a law, okay? Well, if we want to do something, the political implementation, first you need those legal frame. So you enact the law. The same is the technology. We have to develop a technology first, then uh, you have to implement in the real world. Just like uh, those uh, uh, politics, and which is engineering. And the both are important. And they have to collaborate very well. And uh, okay, I do in this order, and this is pretty much the order of uh, history. Okay? And uh, okay, first, <laughs> Probably we can say we start uh, uh, computer networking research in the 1960s when we start having uh, uh, many computers. And uh, first I want to say uh, we start the research uh, in, a, say like in the USA, uh, Rick Ryder. He happened to be the uh, psychologist. But he is also the uh, ARPA, DARPA uh, director. And he envisioned the uh, connecting all computers in the world. So he came up with this gigantic name, Intergalactic Computer Network. So they connect all computers in the world. Is the whole idea of those ARPANET. And uh, unfortunately, Many people, uh, uh, most of people are confused. Internet is a military uh, network, which can survive a nuclear war. And uh, that's wrong, completely wrong. If you can read in uh, any descent, those are history book. The, the why people make so many mistakes is, is some, in a sense, it's a coincidental. Uh, we started this intergalactic computer network, ARPANET, at uh, UCLA. Basically, this is a MIT group. The, this Dick Ryder is uh, from the MIT, and the project manager at uh, ARPA is uh, MIT, and the, the project principal investigator. He just moved from MIT to UCLA. So it's an MIT group. Okay? 
so the UCLA is sort of become a, a, a center. Then uh, my classmate, like uh, uh, Bin Serp, Jan Postel, they are the, uh, those uh, actual those guys who developed uh, those uh, uh, technology. And 10 minutes away by car in uh, Santa Monica, there's an organization called the uh, RAND. And uh, they did, before the ARPANET, about five years before, Air Force project. And the Baran came up with this idea. Is there any there's a network which can survive a nuclear war? And then the, those two, it's only the 10 minutes away, Santa Monica and the, uh, West LA. They didn't have any contact whatsoever. Because one of them is sort of MIT, the academic group. The other one is um, uh, Santa Monica Air Force uh, think tank. And uh, moreover, this Baram, he just came up with a paper. Didn't implement at all. And uh, at uh, ARPANET, primary mission is the um, uh, experiment, implement. So it's a very different group. So they didn't have uh, no communication. After ARPANET is up and running, then they realized there is uh, another study in a neighbor. Okay, so the please do uh, understand uh, nuclear war ha doesn't do anything to do with those ARPANET. And uh, moreover, uh, like in uh, Europe, they think ARPANET is a military project. But uh, even though this is uh, funded by the ARPA, Advanced Research Project Agency or DOD, probably Claiming this is a military project is, uh, I guess, overkill. At that time, all computer science project, uh, including this one, networking. Networking, software engineering, AI, graphics, computer architecture, this is all funded by the ARPA. Then the, do we say, do we say like all computer science is a military project? I guess that's sort of a, a overkill. But, uh, to why some people get confused is uh, uh, military, <coughs> uh, since it's uh, right next door to the ARPA. So the, when the output came up, they tried to utilize. Then uh, they could utilize this computer networking and the software engineering. The rest of them, no, the, the, the uh, DOD military was not interesting at all. So did that sort of give a confusion, especially in uh, uh, Europe, because uh, at the beginning in the 1970s, there very those a deep distrust between uh, Europe and the USA. And uh, so the, uh, if you read any of those uh, European presentation material, they say this is a military project. Okay, now some people say that it's a, a nuclear war preparation uh, project. Okay, but uh, uh, I guess to be neutral, uh, conclude, uh, this is uh, connecting all network in the world is the goal. And uh, about the military, like a software engineering, they try to use. Okay, so they give a sort of impact. But there's a two uh, different operation. Okay, in the US time, this ARPANE project, you don't need a security clearance. Okay, but the military project, you need a security clearance. They, they, in the USA, this is very strict. Okay, having this, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we had a lot of research network in the USA, UK, and the France. And uh, in the 70s, uh, there is a commercial network uh, area. We have a development, IBM, the DEC. Difference, this is far bigger. Funding-wise, 10 times, 100 times bigger. Like this one is a small medium. This is a, say like 100 million project. And another one is, a, this one is a basically a single computer. IBM works only for the IBM computer. They work on the, only the DEC computer. 
And uh, this one <coughs> is work, supposed to work for the everything, obviously. And uh, at the end, we sort of finding out this is the right approach. But at the beginning, <laughs> around the 60, 70, we thought this is a lousy approach. The performance is just terrible, and uh, it's not a functioning. Like we thought that this, uh, this is a by professional, this is by amateur. And uh, because I started all the research around, uh, around this time, and I saw, we saw the, this uh, UCLA project, the later I joined the UCLA. But uh, it's, uh, that's a graduate student work. This is a professional those engineers work. Then uh, later, uh, we have uh, those uh, PC network and telecom network. Uh, okay, then uh, on this uh, core idea is a packet switching. That was a new, both like a packet switching and the high speed networking. Before this ARPANET, the speed typically uh, 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 1.2K BBS or 2.4, very high speed means 9.6. Then all of a sudden ARPANET, there's like a, uh, 56K. So the unbelievable speed. So the most of the telecom community says, uh, that's crazy, won't work. And again, that's the reason why we do this basic research. Right? If it's an incremental enhancement, then it's not a basic research. US, those NSF or ARPA are not interesting. Then the package switching is an idea. The very original idea on the communication is uh, you connect. And they just use it. Okay. Next one is a, a telephone style. You dial up, and you connect. Then uh, during your call, uh, uh, nobody else can use it. Either you use it or not, the rest of uh, others cannot use it. The packet switching is more like a, uh, sending those uh, uh, postcards. Anybody can use anything. Because other, around that time, telecommunication is so expensive. So we thought about that. Is there any way to share? Of course, computer was expensive, and the telecommunication is expensive. So that we sort of tried to minimize the, uh, those cost. So that we came up with uh, those uh, packet switching. And uh, again, telecommunication community thought that that's, this is crazy. It won't work. And uh, that's one of the reasons why ARPANET project was done by the uh, graduate student. Because those uh, established engineers, telecom engineers thought, because this, this is a crazy, crazy idea. So they don't want to get, uh, get involved. And we asked them the review, to the telecommunication, those uh, research community, they said it won't work. It's impossible. And uh, that's the reason why the uh, US government, in a sense, is uh, very smart. At uh, that level, NSF and uh, the ARPA do the funding. If it's uh, doable, probably they don't fund. It's nearly impossible, but not completely impossible. Then uh, they do the funding. OK, then uh, the original concept came both in the UK and the USA. Uh, and the actual those are deployment, development, first France, then the UK, then the USA. Then the question, I'm going to raise this uh, later, is uh, then why the internet we use today is uh, made in USA, not in, <laughs> in France or made in UK? Okay, that's something we have to think about. Then uh, from 70s to 80s, uh, we came up with a uh, uh, realization of packet switching, which is uh, IPv4. Okay, and uh, if you look at the system very carefully, very original concept, especially deployment come from the France. 
Louis Poussin. And uh, later, they formalized uh, in the USA. Through the, uh, we had uh, two groups. One of them is a network working group, NWG, then the, which become, uh, eventually become ITF. Uh, it started in the very beginning of 1970. And uh, then uh, we called another one, IWNG, International uh, Network Working Group, IMWG. And uh, <clears throat> that's, in a sense, beginning of uh, internet governance, 1971. There was uh, those uh, 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 it's European and uh, American, somehow they collaborate research-wise, but uh, uh, the deployment-wise, they cannot cooperate. So they had a lot of meetings. Eventually, it's just they couldn't do it. So the, to me, when did the internet governance start? Uh, around 1970 or 71. Then uh, we sort of uh, used it as a recurring almost every decade until about two, uh, 2000. Okay, then the 1970s, IPv6 or not. And uh, here, the why we have IPv6? Because IPv4 is a 32, 32 bits. If IPv4 is a 64 bits, there are no reason why they can't do it. Then we don't have those IPv6. We don't need. <clears throat> we don't have to spend those uh, hundred billion dollars on IPv6. And uh, that's the engineer. We say like an engineer is a very optimistic in the short term, in the long term is a very pessimistic. Uh, <clears throat> social scientists say the other way around. In the short term, is that they are so pessimistic. In the long term, they are much more uh, optimistic. So the, I think that we should collaborate. <laughs> then uh, since IPv6 doesn't work too well, uh, we implement uh, a <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, We implement a NAT, as uh, Pablo uh, demonstrated in, uh, on Monday. Okay, the layered architecture. Uh, this one again came from the uh, French. <coughs> and uh, originally for the OSI. Uh, in, a, in a political science or social science arena, uh, this layered accusation means a divide and conquer. If you try to do the whole thing in one, of course it's so much better. You can get a much better performance. Then why do, do we do the divide and conquer? Because that, that, that way it's manageable. Like, if you want to change something here, okay, if it's whole thing in, in one, then uh, you have to know this, this whole lot of software. If you change something which may impact here and there, if it's a uh, dependent on conquer, uh, the layered architecture, then uh, <coughs> when you change this one, you don't have to worry about this doors. You just only concern only here. When I started working in the 1960, we don't have this. We don't have this concept of a layered architecture, so the uh, we really suffered. Just we just couldn't do well. And uh, then for the uh, ARPANET, the today internet. They didn't have those layered uh, architecture concept initially. 
Then they thought that this is a good idea, so they adopted. With uh, 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 not instead of seven layer, uh, six layers. And uh, security and the management and data, <coughs> they are sort of orthogonal to this one. Like a management means that you have to have a management at every layer, security again, same thing. Okay, and still, like, uh, this, uh, this development in the 1970s still be used today. Scalability, this is something uh, we have to think about. And uh, you guys, most of you as a social scientist, uh, please give a good thought. This is uh, why we have a, such a good scalability in the internet. Would you believe the very original, as I said, the original internet or the OSI was designed for the 56 or 64K? Do you know today, uh, giga? Easily a million times more. Can, how, how can you scale million times or even more? And now we are experimenting a tera. I guess in any other area, we don't have this kind of scalability. <laughs> then we thought back in the 70s and 80s, we didn't have that much confidence. Yeah, yeah, yes, I guess we could do the million, but not, no way we can do the billion or giga. But today, yes, giga and the tera, yes, we can do it. Then, uh, then uh, how far can we, can we push? Can we push Terra and the Peta all the way? Because that's a market needs, market wants. They don't like a disruption, okay? And uh, that's something we, we have to think about. And uh, those ideas, probably we may have to learn from the social science. I mean, we can do those numbers, okay? Can we add a one more, no, a zero? <laughs> yes, we can do it. Can you put a two zero? Yes, we could do it. But can you go all the way? And what does it mean by the, go all the way? Then uh, I guess we are uh, engineer, we get lost. We don't know the, what does it mean. Only thing we can do is, uh, can you put one more zero? And we struggle, one year, two years, three years, and uh, okay, here, is, here you are. And uh, naming, again, this scalability, uh, we have to think about. Domain name was uh, designed by the, uh, uh, Paul <coughs> Mocha Petris. It's uh, his PhD thesis in the uh, early 1980. And uh, he thought uh, domain name, oh, one million. Let's have a 1,000 TLD and then a 1,000 uh, uh, entry. Uh, by multiply, one million. That's the, uh, our idea. But today, the very same alone, uh, uh, dot com, easily over 10 million. So the, our original idea of a domain name is not working here. Then uh, can, we, can we replace? Uh, that's something we don't know. That's not an engineering issue. Engineering, yes, we, we could. But the management-wise uh, or social science-wise, can we do the uh, 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 replacement? Or what, what do we do in a social disruption caused by those? And the routing, constantly we, have, we are having a problem. Like, uh, we are not looking into the two years in the future. We always try to solve the, this year's problem and the next year's problem. Beyond, okay, come, come back later. We are just so busy. And we barely managed those routing of this year and the next year. And that we have been doing the last 20 years. Do you think we can do it in the next 20 years? And the number of users. Uh, yeah, we can be optimistic. 
but uh, uh, then we may go uncontrollable internet. Uh, naming is a basically it's identification. And uh, we made a couple of those mistakes. Uh, domain name is it's afterthought. The original internet, we didn't have a domain name. Only thing we had is an IP address. 1969. Then uh, Paul uh, wrote a PhD thesis in the early 1980, so they're almost uh, uh, 10 years later. Then uh, we add, and this is causing a problem. Always, like when you make a house or a building anything, try to add something very important that later. Normally won't work. But the engineer, I mean, if we, we have to do it, we'll do it. Then uh, uh, what the side effect, what would you do? Oh, we'll not think about it later. That's the engineering. Okay? If it's working now, don't touch. Don't change. Okay, that's the award. Then we have many of those uh, afterthought. But fundamentally, we still don't know what does it mean with those identification in the uh, uh, internet. And uh, probably don't expect us, technologists, to solve this problem. Because once this one is uh, uh, implemented in a society, then uh, those uh, social scientists should define the, what, what does it mean by the identification. Then uh, if you give a specification, yes, we could implement. But uh, if, you may, if we make uh, uh, this design, then uh, we will do the one which can solve the next couple of years. Okay? Because in the society, the identification is a very fundamental issue. For, for us, it's a convenience. Originally, we did it by number. And uh, then I thought, uh, no, number is not too good. Let's do the uh, uh, alphabet domain name. We sort of add up. OK, and also this causes a problem. Uh, this is, uh, even though we say internet is uh, uh, distributed, this domain name, no. It's a central control. So that we, may, we create an icon. And uh, that's because uh, architecturally, this is uh, very pro problematic, technically speaking. Then uh, do we coordinate well between uh, uh, technologists and uh, those uh, social scientists? No. Main reason is uh, bo both of us are too busy. So if it works, just leave it <laughs> until you break. Once it's break, okay, then we'll fix it. We are good in fixing. Okay, that's the engineering. Security, this is another afterthought. Originally, we didn't have those security at all. The reason is uh, it's a research networking. Okay, then at that time, challenge was uh, computer is expensive, telecommunication is expensive. How can I have those uh, best uh, performance out of those is the issue. So, so the security, okay, let's think about that one later. And uh, for the engineer, security is uh, not uh, attractive, not a sexy uh, topic. Architecture is much more, or communication is much more uh, those act attractive. Uh, <laughs> then uh, uh, we have a fundamental problem. Can we make those internets secure? Yes, we could. And uh, we have those internet. Okay? Between a bank, bank to bank transaction, we call the gyro, it's almost 100% safe. You never see any, any breakdown. We can make it that way or the uh, uh, network within the NSA, or the uh, uh, DOE, 
uh, I mean nuclear web, uh, nuclear weapon, uh, those research facility, they are safe, but it's ridiculously difficult to use. Then the problem is uh, contradictory. We are it's a social infrastructure. Infrastructure means that even the, like um, elementary school kids or the 80, 90 years old senior should be able to use it. And uh, this, uh, how do we handle this? Complete those uh, contradictory those uh, requirement. And uh, we are in the middle. And uh, this one again, don't expect um, engineer to solve this problem. Social science should solve and to give us a specification. Then probably uh, we could implement. But if us to make those architecture, no. We are not uh, trained that way. Then the next one is uh, uh, this. Once you get into cyber crime, cyber surveillance, cyber war, we just don't know how to handle. This doesn't belong. It's beyond the internet governance. I think about that. Do you think like um, NSA, surveillance level, you think we can do the multi-stakeholder approach with the open document? No chance. So we have some different level of the governance. And we don't have it today. Okay, then uh, uh, the last three, <clears throat> malware, malicious software, what do you call the virus. This one <clears throat> is increasing now in the last 10, 20 years. Problem is a, it's a, it's not a convex, it's a concave or exponential explosion. Today, you get this much per day. And the, ex and the exponential those explosion. How do we handle? And the routing, uh, Pablo uh, explained uh, two days ago how do we do the uh, uh, routing, and I hope you do the more uh, BGP routing and uh, interior routing next time because this is very important to understand the uh, fundamental of the internet. Okay, within ISP, or we call the AES technically, within our group, how do we route is the one thing, which is okay. Because those are company, they have to do it, so they will do it. Problem is the exterior uh, uh, routing from one ISP to the another. Okay, the, the number of those entity growing more exponentially or the concave. Always we want to have a convex. Eventually it's taper off, but it's not doing that way. It's sort of a concave or exponential uh, uh, growth. Then how do we handle? those uh, exterior uh, uh, routing. And uh, we have a technology called the BGP doing uh, pretty well. But uh, how far can we push? The table is uh, getting uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, uh, we don't have uh, like a, a choice, like a, let's change IPv4 to the IPv6. We don't have those choice. We have to hang on to this table. Table all those uh, AS number or, or, or roughly speaking, all those ISP uh, is on the table. So the one ISP to the other ISP, how do we go? Is the issue, and uh, it's tough. And uh, we are sort of solving in a short term. This year's problem and the next year's problem. We don't look beyond the two years. That's uh, we we'll think about that later. And how far can you push? Once this digital economy become a trillion dollar, they don't, they don't like us to do this way. Probably they would prefer, okay, we'll give you a billion dollar. Well, if you need, we'll give you 10, 10 billion dollar, or 100 billion dollar. Why don't you solve the problem completely, which we can use next, say, like uh, 10 years or 20 years? 
We are not operating in that way. We are doing it in the volunteer base at the ITF. That's, uh, that's what Jim implied uh, uh, yesterday. Okay, communication <coughs> is um, uh, easier. Uh, first of all, yeah, optical communication, uh, about 20 years or 30 years, are doing okay. Uh, we are very lucky. We have a, a WDM. WDM is a, like a fiber using as if this one fiber be a, say like a 100 fiber. It's a magic. Okay? It's a one fiber as a one fiber, as one fiber. Uh, anybody, anybody can do it. Can you put a, say like a 100 fiber into the one? That's what we are doing with this tech technology. So the, today, typically, you can get a, a terabps. OK, then we can push even further. So they like, OK, we have a new those fiber cable, point A to point B, or the, from the uh, South Africa to the uh, uh, Ghana. Then typically, it's not a giga. We have a 50, 60 tera. BPS. So the, you have a 1,010 giga link to plenty. We are, not, we are uh, uh, using uh, only the 1% or 5% of the capacity. And we can add up a uh, new one all the time. So the, we're doing pretty okay. But access is different. Access, you have to go to the each house. That's extremely time consuming. And a sort of we are getting a conclusion. We are sort of giving up. It's just too expensive connecting each house. First of all, it's too slow and, uh, and expensive. And on the other hand, the wireless communication is getting so much better. And uh, today, either doing uh, this one, uh, uh, mobile or the wireless, you can get a uh, uh, gigabps easily. And that's all, that's all you need in your house. So we don't need all those fiber, uh, uh, fiber anymore. Long time ago, this one provides only the uh, uh, one mega or 10 mega. So the, it's not good enough. But uh, today, you can get a, a giga. So the, so the seems we are switching to the, the last mile, switching to the wireless, including mobile, and the backbone up to the tower nearby your home is a fiber. It's those combinations seems to be doing okay. For, for next, say, like 5, 10, 15 years, we don't see any problem. So there's a telecommunication engineer. I guess they're doing a very good job. Uh, the cost is just coming down. Only problem is like uh, uh, many parts of Asia and Africa uh, five, the communication is expensive. That's not our problem. That's a regulator or business or politician's problem. It's a social science side. Okay, they could make up the ridiculous, the ridiculously cheap if they can collaborate. And uh, so it's not an engineer's problem, okay? And the internet of things, <laughs> this is a headache to us. Yes? Uh, uh, the, the data. Uh, uh, Internet of Things. <clears throat> this is a headache. And it's coming. And uh, we don't know what to do. And uh, we may be heading toward the uh, anarchy. As yesterday's <laughs> talk. One of problem is, uh, okay, human is uh, 80 billion. Okay, rough ballpark figure, 10 billion. And uh, I guess we are solving those uh, 10 billion problems. And uh, we spend enough time. So the, I guess it's sort of under control. Then uh, can we handle the uh, one trillion? That's where we are heading within the next 20 years. And uh, 
ask any those are lead engineer, technologist, can you handle the one trillion? I don't think they'll say yes. We just don't know. Then, uh, okay, if you say, like, uh, okay, it'll be a te uh, one trillion uh, in next 100 years, then uh, we have a confidence. But the problem is it's coming <laughs> within the next 10 to 20 years. Okay, uh, it's, it's tough. Second, is this internet thing is the internet? No. We use all sorts of technology. Internet is just one of them. Like today, we have about 50, around the, say like a, a 10 billion, 20 billion dollars IoT. Then how many of them are using the internet? 5%, 10%, rest of them, the different protocol. Then how do we cooperate? And okay, let's have a standard. Do not just do the Google IoT words. You can get a whole bunch of those uh, uh, articles and the presentation material. It's almost uh, the, the, they call the war. Okay, we just uh, not we just cannot coordinate. Then, uh, is there any way out? Problem is uh, this IoT is a trillion dollar industry. If it's one billion, yes, we could coordinate. Like uh, I can make I can put the domain name. That's a one bi a billion dollar industry. But trillion, no. It's a fight. Who is going to win? Then the standard. There are many kind of standard. Only the ten percent or so is a internet standard. And the which one is going to prevail? Probably a combination. And this is a very common in the political science, right? Long time ago, like Chinese history, always there's a war and the get together <laughs> and the fight against. And it seems we are in the dark kind of war period. And uh, then to make it worse, this technology is still under development. It's not matured. Which means uh, we may have a surprise technology tomorrow. Then uh, they change uh, whole those, uh, uh, those game plan. Then uh, lastly, IoT produces a lot of data. So the people are worrying about the uh, privacy. And the main people say, like, uh, for convenience, let's give up our privacy. Because after all, no, just no way we can do anything. But again, this is not a technical issue. It's a social science issue, I believe. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, run away, but uh, like a driving seat should be the social scientist, not an engineer. And if you ask us to provide a solution, we may have provide a very lousy solution. Then the internationalization and the localization. Uh, uh, this is a tough issue. Uh, this internet technology and the other uh, those IT is a, tend to be very disruptive. Disruptive. Okay, uh, has a tendency, but I saw the benefit of the paper by the social scientists. It tend to widen the uh, digital divide, not narrow the digital divide. So the way I give a lecture, I typically say like, uh, for example, in Africa, we have about 1,000 languages, and uh, I say like uh, within the next 20, 30 years, Probably only the one or two or three languages will survive. The rest of them will be gone. Because after all, like African, pretty much same in the Asian, is they are bilingual. I mean, if you use English, it's so easy. You can use a Google, Microsoft, do 
everything. But the, once you start using the local language, it's just so tough. And uh, if you want to have a Google-like search, do you know how much does it cost? Easily billion dollars. And who can afford those billion dollars or more? Is the issue because uh, 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 those are those are things we have to do it. And uh, once you get in those uh, uh, content and the search and translation, they are getting very expensive. Each each one of them, if we want to have a proper decent one, easily you should uh, expect a billion dollars investment. Then which country in uh, Africa and Asia can invest that much? Okay, <laughs> and uh, the couple of remarks. First of all, uh, this is my major area. Internet is a, is a large scale system and a complex system, and we have to handle accordingly. If you think in a simple, simple, simplicity, simple minded, probably won't work. Not in the 21st century. In 1970, it worked, but not in this century. And the fragmentation is real. It's just a matter of how do we handle. And some of them may be good, technically and also socially. And some of them are bad. And some of them is a, a sort of a depends uh, where you are. And uh, so the, have a good study. And uh, if you can wait until next year, Milton Mura. Milton is writing a book now. And uh, probably he can come up with a reasonably good book. And uh, otherwise, there's a couple of uh, one and, uh, in Asia. Ask uh, Jeff Houston's uh, uh, video, one hour AP video. What's pretty good? Uh, at least I'm uh, technically sound. OK. And uh, uh, this is a very tricky project because it's a half technical have social science. So somebody who is uh, good in both can write, but that's a bit, it's a very rare species. And uh, I guess it's about time, in the 21st century, we should take this approach. Leave our technology development, architecture, to the technical people. I guess we made a plenty of mistake. Now we have to do it together. Because after all, they will be implemented in our society and they give a lot of impact. And for that matter, NSF in the USA is doing just about the best. When they have those advanced those research in the technology, they always, almost they mandate social scientists to be committee member. And we should be able to convince them. And they ask a lot of questions and are not easy to answer, but we have to. Because eventually it will be implementing uh, uh, impact the society. Then, uh, for example, like a future internet we did. Now that's about uh, 10, 15 years. Current internet is not good enough. So let's make a, from scratch, let's make a uh, a good internet, which we can use next hundred years. Do you know what happened? Failed. I shouldn't say completely, but nearly completely, so that you don't you don't hear anymore. So we spent a lot of money. American NSF and they spent a lot of money. European also they spent a lot of money. We Asia, uh, China, Japan, Korea. Yes, we spent a lot of money and uh, put a, uh, those a good blame. It didn't work. It's that difficult. Okay, well, we almost had a blank check. And we attract almost anybody in the world. Would you like to join our research? We could. And uh, failed fantastically. So that's the uh, today. Okay, so this, there's no easy way 
out. Okay, but well, that's the reality. The stake is big. Easy trillion dollar, probably tens of a trillion dollar. Eventually, it will be a 20, 30, 40% of real economy. Real economy is about 80 trillion dollar globally. And those digital economy, eventually, today it's more like 5 billion, 5, 5 trillion. It will go to 10, 20. So this, it's very, very important.